Okay. I just want to share a few of the things that I've learned from experimenting a little bit with whiteboard.chat. I'm definitely not an expert. I'm still in that novice beginner phase, but want to share some of the things that I put onto this particular whiteboard activity. Um, I did upload the PDF test statements from OpenUp, and you find that right here in the toolbar on the left, Upload File. You can do it from Google Drive or your desktop, um, your hard drive, however you want to upload. It was very easy to do. And I did monitor or modify this document. So it just had one of the tasks from lesson four. Um, also, there's several features I added on here just to kind of experiment and play in the sandbox with these. I did add a recording with directions that you could use for students. And that you would click on this camera icon, add media. And when you click on that, you can choose a photo, you can add audio or video and then you can listen to it to play it back before you're done and setting it. You can also change the size of anything that you pick. Um, you would do that by choosing move and resize, then clicking on the object. Notice I also put a sticky note here. If you click on the wrench tool and open this up, the sticky note would be here. So you could pick the color. Um, there you go for the sticky note. Also, you see a timer down here. For the timer, I click the clock here, press on that. I think because I've already done it, maybe it's not letting me. I can make it disappear and then I can click on the timer again. And I'm gonna choose as students join, maybe I'm gonna give 10 minutes. So you can do that as an instant start, expiring at a certain time or as students join, or you can even lock the board when the timer expires. Okay, so put that in there. Um, let's see what else. Also down here in the bottom right, you see three toggle switches. Um, you can also change the color of your board here. You can change it to anything you want. And I do have it set in the settings that the board color will be the same as the pen color right now, but you can change that if you don't like that. So this first one is the pen thickness. So you can scroll through here, toggle this over. This is what the pen looks like right now. If I make it thicker, it's you know gonna look like that. Here's your undo. The second one is the opacity. If you want it to be more like a highlighter, you would lessen the opacity of your drawing pen. And the third one here is your text size. When you put your cursor anywhere on the board, you can just start typing text, by the way. So I can just put my cursor there and start typing that text. I can undo that. Okay, so those are the major tools there. And then here, if you click on this gear icon, this is where you can do some settings here also. You can have set for iPad size, Chromebook size. You can have students log in. You can make it so they can only draw on their individual or group boards. And you can change what tools they see. For this particular PLC night, I have it set on C Simple Tools. Um, but for very beginning time that you use it with students, I recommend that you only have them see very simple tools just until you teach them everything and you kind of introduce those a little bit at a time. If you scroll down here, there's other features. You can also customize menu options for students. You can also invite co-teachers. So you would click on that and copy a link to send your co-teacher. You can reset where the palette is. I'll show you the palette in just a minute. and just save all those menu items. So that was the gear icon. Here on the three dots, you can open up the class boards to see who's on the board right now. And I like to make it alphabetical. I just found out this tip. It'll number the boards and then it'll put your students in alphabetical order. Okay, to close that. Also on here, you can lock objects on the page if you don't want students to be able to delete them. Like I can lock that. Um, you can click on any participant at any time. You could showcase their work. You could create a chat with them. You could also lock their page. There's a raise hand feature for students. Um, down here below in the bottom left, you can click on grid view. And this is where you get to see like the live in action, real time learning for students and give feedback. So I am on here as a teacher on my laptop but then I'm also on here as a student, usually on all my activities so that I can do that as well. 
Um, for example, if I wanted to join Yimia's board, I could do that. I could click join or showcase. If I go into that board, it'll just take a moment. And I can see what kind of work she's doing. And if I want to click on the little palette up here, there's a drop down that appears. You can scroll down and choose reward. And then you can choose from a number of different stickers. And I can say, oh, she's doing great. And I can decide where to put that. Great job. So that's really handy. There's also Bitmojis and other stickers on there as well. Um, that just gives you a little bit of a cursory view. I know that there's a lot more. Oh, one more thing. You can also add a poll at any time. And then to invite students, they could use a QR code. I tend to copy the link and I put it in Canvas since Canvas is our LMS, or you can just drop it into the chat in Zoom or Google Meets. Um, I wanna say that when students are on iPads, they have that ability to scroll up and down in. And my students are used to using Notability where they can zoom in. So the only thing I figured out right now is if they touch this left menu bar with their two fingers on the iPad and then just kind of zoom out with their fingers, they can zoom in and out, but that does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to do that, but I have no problem doing that from my keypad right here, zooming in and out. If you want to go back to your instructor view, you would just go back to instructor. Um, you can also, in grid view, go into the gear icon here. I'm thinking of more things as we're going along. And you can pick how what your matrix is, like how many boards you want in a row and how many rows per page. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's about all I have for now.